Welcome to Sense and Nonsense A to Z, where we pick topics based off of the letter of the day. Today is episode nine of season three, featuring the letter I. We're family and we're your hosts, A, T, and Z. So let's get started. Today's hello is Tahitian, Yorana. Yorana. Yeah. Just in time for I is Independence Day. Happy birthday, America. (laughs) Happy 4th of July. Yeah. You doing anything? Actually traveling south. Because the fireworks are louder here in New Jersey than they are in North Carolina. And with the fireworks and the pets not getting along very well, we try to make it a little bit more comfortable in North Carolina rather than New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Just cooking and eating. Yeah. Hamburgers and stuff like that, but inside. You have a grill, right? No, I don't have a grill anymore. Oh, okay. No, I got rid of it. I can't even remember the last time we grilled. I know. I have one and it's rusted, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Mine was two. And I was like, why do I still have this here? I'm just, I just got rid of it. We, We watch fireworks, you know? Yeah. My neighborhood does them. Does big guy like fireworks or? Yeah, he does. Oh, okay, he, cool. He didn't when he was little. Yeah, because they're loud. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's scary because you don't know they're coming. Yeah, for sure. But now he, he likes them quite a bit. That's, that's mm-hmm. cool. So that's, that's all from here. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's get on with it. All righty. I have a quote. Okie dokie. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Which was from John Quincy Adams. It's a good quote. Yeah. Let's go beyond normal. Alrighty. Inspiration is the spark of life. Without it, we'd all just be laying in our caves and our animal skins (laughs) doing only what was necessary to survive, right? Right. People who are not inspired live pretty lackluster lives. Inspiration is passion. It's a primal life force that compels us to action and builds on itself. I inspire you, you inspire me, and hopefully our inspiration inspires someone else and so on and so on. That's the whole goal. That's right. Without inspiration, we wouldn't be celebrating our country's independence today. Good point. Our founding fathers were inspired to create something different. And I think that's what we're here to do, to inspire each other by putting what we uniquely have to offer into the world, being both leader and follower at the same time. See how you just segued that right into (laughs) Independence Day? That was awesome. I tried. I tried. (laughs) That was inspiring. Thank you very much. (laughs) I'm inspired by this quote. So there you go. There you go. I have a top 10 most famous Italian foods. Ooh. And this is from Visit Italy, which I'm guessing they have their finger on the pulse for Italian food, right? I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Take a guess. Guess one. Pizza. Pizza is number one. Very good. Hey, all right. All righty. And it seems like they have like categories going. So number two is carbonara. Ooh, so good. I love it. Oh, yeah. Number three is lasagna. Love that too. Me too. Number four is Florentine steak. Really? I was a little surprised with that. That's interesting. (laughs) Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Number five is Amatriciana. And I'm like, have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. It's an Italian pasta sauce made with pork. I had to actually look it up. And I'm like, huh, okay. okay. So pasta sauce. Okay, I get that. Number six is a risotto. Ooh, love risotto. Oh, I do too. And I know you love the next one. Number seven, tiramisu. Oh, I do love that. Yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. All right. Number eight, meatballs and sauce. Okay. Number nine, one of my favorites is tortellini. I like cold tortellini, actually, like in oh, salads. Like, like in pasta. Yeah. Yeah. Pasta salad. Mm-hmm, me too. Mm-hmm. 
And number 10 is Parmigiana. What does that mean? Like chicken right? Parmesan, eggplant Parmesan, anything? Exactly. Parmesan? That whole category. Just like carbonara was a yeah. whole category. Parmigiana was a whole category too. I got I got to be honest. I do like that too. Oh, I know. So not good for you. But yeah, I, I love know. it too. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Fry something and put cheese on it. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. But mozzarella or, or uh, provolone. Provolone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it. A um, couple things that I was a little surprised didn't show up. Maybe gelato, right? Yeah. Cannoli, Maybe. right? Or asaboka? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or how about focaccia? Yeah. You know. So anyway, know. yeah. But we all have, good, it's all good stuff. All, I guess we had to go to uh, top fifteen in order to get those in, right? Yeah. <laughs> but pizza uh, yeah. was number one. Oh my god, I I had to figure it was. Yeah. It's the most widely eaten yeah, I think thing, so you know. Yeah. Even my son eats pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Yummy. Yeah. All right. The Those top 10. Italian foods. So that was a good top 10, huh? Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> okay. On to A to Z headlines. Number one. Did you hear about this Barbie movie that's coming out? Yeah. <laughs> Starring Margot Robbie. She's yeah. also one of the producers. They're currently marketing it pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's within other commercials too. It's in progressive commercial. Oh my goodness. So it's, yeah. So it's uh, due to be released on July 21st. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Kate McKinnon. Will yeah. Ferrell. Rhea Perlman. All good names, you know? Yeah. The thing I'm looking forward to seeing is the custom pink 1956 Corvette with a back seat. <laughs> Because no. the Corvettes did not have a backseat, so it's custom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, talk about movies, by the way. I finally got to see Top Gun Maverick on HBO came out. What did you think? I thought it was good. I didn't think it was awesome good. You know, I think um, a, a, lot of, a lot of things were a little bit on the far-fetched side, but it was good. It was okay. Good. Yeah, it's a good movie. Since you brought up Top Gun, I was just looking at a, something from Tom Cruise doing mm -hmm. the stunts for new Mission Impossible. Okay. He drives a motorcycle off a cliff. And he really drives oh, a motorcycle God. off a cliff and then parachutes down. He had to do 500 skydives and 13,000 motocross jumps to prepare for that. Wow. 13,000. And this man wants to do his own stunts. He does his own stunts. I know. I mean, you know. It's ridiculous. In, in order for you to do that stunt, this is what you have to prepare for. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know. And he did it six times on the day. Did he really? Yes. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, he's an incredible actor. Yeah, he's incredible. Absolutely. You can't take that away from a man. No, no. And he's in great shape. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, second thing I have here is after only 12 days of the fire and the bridge collapse by Philly, mm -hmm. the I-95 bridge to Northeast Philly was reopened 12, really? 12 days. They and, said that was going to be months. Well, the, the governor, Governor Josh Shapiro, had said pretty much that, you know, he was shooting for about a month or, you know, like five weeks. They did it in 12 days. Wow. And of course, they were under a microscope, of literally. Course. They had a webcam set up oh, so, <laughs> so you can watch, watch it. it. Exactly. Oh, exactly. And here's his quote. We've shown them what our grit, our determination are all about. Mm. End quote. So congratulations yeah. to him. And then when it reopened, the first to go over were two fire trucks. Yeah. And the second fire truck had all the mascots. And of course, right in the middle of all the mascots was the Philly Fanatic. Oh, like we were talking about last episode. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Well, good so, for them. Yeah, I thought that that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three, Queen's Music Catalog, which goes through Disney Music Group, is about to be sold to Universal Music Group, which could be the most expensive catalog to ever be sold. Really? They're thinking it's going to surpass $1 billion. Holy crap. I know, and it's expected to close soon. And just as a comparison, Bruce Springsteen's was $550 million, Bob Dylan's was $300 million, and Genesis was $300 million. Wow. I know, holy cow. Holy cow. I know. 
and they deserve it. I mean, oh, oh come on. Please. Yeah, I know. My favorite band. Your favorite. <laughs> and your favorite band, too, right? Yeah. 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 So um, that's what I got for headlines. Okay. Are you ready for some Big Bang Therapy? I am. Okay, let's do our checklist. Okay. This happens to be one of my favorite episodes. Is it? Yeah. Awesome. Season five, episode two, the infestation hypothesis. <laughs> Penny gets a new chair she found on the street. <laughs> yeah. And Leonard and Priya are trying to make their long distance relationship work. That's right. the theme. Right. So we open up and Leonard's getting ready to have a dinner date over Skype with Priya. Right. And Sheldon points out that it's 8 a.m. in Mumbai. <laughs> so they're actually going to have Dinfast. <laughs> <laughs> and Dinfast is one of the catchphrases because he keeps saying it. And when he says it, he rolls his eye. Right. <laughs> and Leonard has a salad, a nice looking salad, actually, mm -hmm. for his yeah, Dinfast. Yep. So Sheldon leaves because he's annoyed with his relationship with Priya. And right. he misses the days when he could just return his dates <sighs> to the video store. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he goes and hangs over at Penny's. And, and he has Penny a new chair. <laughs> yeah, which he really is enjoying. But he yes. was Penny's chops a little because she's like, look at us. We're like an old married couple. You reading, yeah. I'm reading. And then Sheldon goes, if we were a married couple, the wife would serve iced tea and snickerdoodles. <laughs> I don't have iced tea and snickerdoodle. A good wife would go to the store. <laughs> and she says, I want a divorce. And he goes, great. On your way to the lawyer, stop by the store and get some tea and cookies. <laughs> great exchange. So good. Yeah. And then he tells her how much he's enjoying this chair. And she right. says, Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. I still can't believe somebody threw it out. And he's like, what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, it was just on a street. I paid a homeless guy 10 bucks to help me get it up here. And that was it. It was over. He <laughs> freaks right out. He, he bolts out of the chair and he's like, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And that's another catchphrase. Yeah. And he starts stripping. Yes. And he's like, I've been sitting in trash. He's like, I need your shower. And he goes and runs into her shower. And then he, seconds later, he comes running back out in his, in his underwear. underwear. <laughs> because there's a wet Band-Aid on the shower floor. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. It's so good. Yeah. Meanwhile, Leonard... And Howard and Raj are at Caltech in Howard's lab. And they are using a hydraulic thermoforming press, which the college paid $175,000 for. Yeah, so they're using this thing to make paninis and tuna melts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big thing, too. It's you know? huge. It's yeah. enormous. And... <laughs> How it's taking notes on it. Too. Yeah, exactly. And I could not make out his belt buckle. It's a pizza, a pepperoni pizza. Oh, was it slice really missing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But he asks Leonard, "Are you doing the cyber nasty?" Basically, yeah. and yeah. he's like, "No, we just talk." And he's like, "Well, you know, you got to do something because otherwise." You're going to lose her to a fancy man in a turban who grew up coloring Kama Sutra and coloring books. <laughs> and that's one of my cringeworthy moments, too, when he was going cyber nasty, prickle tickle, <laughs> digital bow, ch bow, bow, <laughs> bow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> or junk jiggling, whatever yeah. he was calling it. Yeah, yeah was, that, that was cringeworthy for me. That wasn't bad for me. I'll tell okay. you, there are oh, a couple of Oh, there's of two other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's two cringeworthy moments yeah. for me. Yeah. And one of them is with Leonard trying to have cyber sex with Priya. The first time, me too. Yep. it fails miserably. He does just a oh. terrible job. <laughs> yeah, you're a dirty girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the second time he tries it, he's Googled it and he's got an index card there with <laughs> right. stuff he's got to say on it. Right. And he's saying stuff and it's not terrible, but it's not good either. Yeah. And she's trying to stop him and he just keeps going. And she's like, Leonard. And he's like, yeah, that's it. Say my name. My name. <laughs> she's like, my parents are here. <laughs> and then and they then, 
come both, into the picture. <laughs> yeah, that both Cougar Polly sandwich her. And her father says, hello, Leonard, if I also may say your name. <laughs> that is super cringy. Yeah. And by the way, they are the celebrity appearances again. Mm-hmm. The Cougar Pollys, Alice Amter, Brian George, and Artie Mann. So my second cringe oh, moment. It's got to be mine, too is they're back in the lab with right. Howard and he is introducing Leonard to these kissing machines that work right. over the internet. Right. And so he'll have one side and Priya would have another side and you put your mouth on this and it simulates kissing, kissing. and he's like give it a try and Leonard's like I don't think so. Think so. And Raj is like he volunteers. I'll try it. <laughs> of course. And they're Frenching each other and they're really going for it. Their <laughs> eyes are closed. Right. They're totally into it. And then Raj bites Howard's tongue. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Cringe worthy for oh sure. Oh my god. And That's my like, number one. Why do you gotta make it weird? <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. was already weird. And then they're doing it again. Oh my it's god. It's so bad. Those weren't my two cringe moments. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot of idiosyncrasies in this episode, and they all have to do with Sheldon, really. Yes, of course. He's got to take the shower after he thinks he's sad right. trash. Then the okay. Band-Aid on the floor. Mm-hmm. Then he goes to Penny, and he does his three knocks, and she right. opens the door, and she's like, what's, what's that up, buttercup? buttercup? <laughs> <laughs> what's the word, hummingbird? He keeps on well... knocking. He keeps on coming back. Then the last one was, what's the jest physicist? I like that one. Yeah, that one's good. And every yeah. time he's trying to implore her to get rid of this chair, and she's like, no. And then she shuts the door, and then he tries one more time, and she opens the door, and she thrusts the chair cushion at him, uh, yeah. and it sent him screaming, <laughs> and he ran away, and then he had to, after she shut the door, he had to come back and do the one more knock. That third knock. I yeah. Mean, so and then funny. he shows up later at Amy's, and he does it, and she points out to him, you're aware that your ritualistic <laughs> knocking behavior is symptomatic of obsessive-compulsive disorder, and he goes is not is not is not <laughs> she's like denial 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 <laughs> yeah so it, it it's all about sheldon and yes. this stuff going on in his head and he has right. this bug daydream nightmare that yeah. there are bugs that, crawling all over that was him. actually scary too it was it <laughs> yeah. was scary yeah and then the chair like, of death <laughs> yeah so there's no spock alert and there's no, no whiteboard in no. this episode mm-hmm. now in the costumes and games column, Sheldon wears boring t-shirts this entire episode. Yep, exactly. He's got a stripe yep. and then a horizontal dotted stripe. It's right. not very good. But I am going to count the kissing machine as a game. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's done over the internet. <laughs> okay. And that's actually a real thing. We had talked about that. Uh, what was that last season? Yeah. That somebody in Asia came up with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's your best laugh out loud moment? Or have we touched on it already? We kind of haven't touched on that yet. Okay. So okay. let's let's go to It has this, to do with the a, chair. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling yours and mine's the same. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Who do you yeah. love most in this episode? Penny. Me too. Okay. okay? And the reason is because of... The interaction with Sheldon. Absolutely. And now the interaction with Amy. Right. Okay. So this is yours too. Yes, it is. Okay. So Amy comes over to try and convince Penny on Sheldon's behalf to get rid of this chair. And Penny right. gets wise to it and she gets mad. And she's like, yeah. it's really crappy of you yeah. to try and manipulate me. Oh, don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the chair. And she sits in the chair and then she goes, Ow. Ow. <laughs> And Penny's like, what's wrong? She's like, something's biting my tushy. It's not important. Ow! And Penny's like, get up, get up. And we look in it and we can see a creature inside moving oh, no. under the cushion. And they <laughs> run out of the apartment screaming. Right. And as they get to the next landing. They're still screaming. They're still <laughs> screaming the whole time. And yeah. Penny's like, swear you won't tell Sheldon what happened. <laughs> Amy's like, I swear. And then they start screaming again and run down to the next landing. And then Amy's like, can I tell my doctor? I'm probably going to need shots. And she's like, yeah, sure. And then they start screaming again and run all the way down. (laughs) That's the best part. My favorite. Everything is funny. 
all, on all sides. You know, it's a good storyline going on both sides. And yeah. you can see how this is really setting it up for the end of Leonard and Priya because this is not going to work. There's no yeah. way this no. thing is going to work. No, not at all. But that kiss between Raj and Howard oh, yeah. with the thing. Oh, my God. Oh, and watching Leonard's face as he's watching this happen. <laughs> and then <laughs> finally his head just falls. He's like, oh, <laughs> God. Like, These two are my friends, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then the other laugh out loud moment mm -hmm. is when Howard and Raj are going down the street and oh, find the yeah. chair. Yeah. What a great chair. What Who would throw chair? this away? Exactly. Help me get it upstairs because Raj figures that if that chair was in the apartment, he wouldn't have to sit on the floor anymore. Exactly. As they're carrying it in, you see the creature in the back of the chair. That's, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. another laugh out loud moment. And just thinking about the fact that this chair is going to show up in Sheldon's apartment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So this like was said, a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. The infestation hypothesis. Brace yourself for word okay. game. No, and I'm being told that these might be a little tough. So I fantastic. Am, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. And judging by the first one, I tend to agree. All right, you okay. ready? Yeah. All right. Frozen. 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 Yes. Ice. Mm -hmm. Icicle. Yes. <laughs> By the way, that was a good clue. Okay. That helped me. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. I don't know. Did you see me do the long, long, no, long? No. Okay. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, shot. Inoculation. I guess That's that so was close. A bit... <laughs> it's so close. Um, syringe. Insulin? Fuel. Inject. In, or injection. Injection. That's right. right. I was sweating that for a second. I'm like, what the heck is going to be my next clue? I don't <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. So that wasn't an easy one either. No. Okay. I liked inoculation. That, that, that was good. That would have been a good that's one. That's why I was okay. like, oh, oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> okay. Um, indefinitely infinity yes oh okay that was good thank you okay salary income yes all right all right i had to think about that mm -hmm. all righty um mm, clarinet instrument yes yay all right Sick. I'm sorry, repeat. Sick. Ill. Yes. All right. Okay. This might be a little tough. Edison. Inventor. Invent. Yes. Invent. Yes. Yay. All right. Oh, got a duplicate. Okay. <laughs> Dummy. Imbecile. Ignorant. Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> oh, man. I guess that's a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you got to admit, all three were good, though. I'm all right with all three. I thought all three were good. That's why I was just like looking at you. <laughs> like, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Let me just go through the eyes. Okay. Um, thought. Idea. Yes. Shoo. All right. Oh. Today. Independent. Independence. <laughs> yes. Independence? Okay. Yes. Judges? Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding. All, right. All right. Yeah. All right. So that wasn't too bad, right? No. 46. All right. 46 is good. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Seems to be a theme with us. Yes. 46. 
I don't know what I would have given you for independence if it wasn't today. <laughs> <laughs> good point. That would have been yeah. tough. That would have been tough. Yeah. All right. Good job. You too. Word game. I edition. It's time for our desert island playlist. Yes, it is. This is Let an exciting band. <laughs> Letter I. In excess. Yes. Now, when I started listening, my list was very long. Was <laughs> it really? Like, yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I, you can't put an entire album. No. Number one. Number two, not all these songs are fit for the Desert Island playlist. True. But um, I have a it's couple not of necessarily your favorite. Right. It's right. not necessarily your favorite songs. It's just when you're on a desert island, what would you take with you? So. Exactly. So, OK, I'm going to guess mm, I'll go with two. I have a feeling my number one is in there, though. So, OK, yeah, you go first. All right. My number one is new sensation. That's it. Number All one. Right. Yep. I had a feeling we were going to be. It's got to be right. Yeah, of course. It's just such a snappy song. It's got to be number one. <laughs> of course. It's a great song. It is. It really is. Okay. So and I can see one. myself singing on a desert island. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 Got to be. All right. Mm -hmm. What's your number two? What you need. Me too. All right. <laughs> all right. So first of all, good. that's a great song, but it, I think it's probably my number two in excess song anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I mean, it's yeah. nice that uh, it fit on the playlist because I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> this works. Number three is the one I struggled with, actually. Um, I had lots of options for number three. Me okay. Too. Okay. So number do you three go first? for me. Yeah. Okay. You go now, first. My number three is Devil Inside. Ah, need you tonight. Oh, that was my other choice. <laughs> but, there you go. But right before we decided to record, I listened to them again, both mm -hmm. of them. And I was sure. like, I just, it's got to be Devil Inside. I had to pick okay. Devil Inside. Okay. So need you tonight. Great. That means it gets on our list. I love yes, that. Yes, exactly. So, so I'll so be borrowing that from you. And that's on my honorable mention. Oh, great. Yep. I also okay. had uh, Disappear. Me too. All right. That's my honorable mention. Oh, yeah. that was, that's awesome. That came yeah. out good. Yeah. And uh, I have one more, Suicide Blonde. I really like that song. Um, I like the song too, but I didn't make mention of it. Okay. All yeah. right. So do you agree with our picks? We'd love to hear what your choices would be. Leave us a comment on our Facebook page, Sense and Nonsense A to Z. Or if you're listening on YouTube, in the comments down below, and let us know which three songs by an excess you would put on your desert island playlist some a to z sports for us okay a few weeks ago the yankees were playing the dodgers at dodger stadium in the bottom of the eighth inning aaron judge literally ran through a fence in right field to make an amazing catch he banged into the gates and he actually dubbed his toe. I don't know why they have this. There's a concrete pad in the outfield, and then you go to this gate. Well, as he was running, he hit his toe so bad that the, at first they said it was sprained and that all he needed was an injection. Then they said there was two sprains. Then they said it was torn. Needless to say, they're talking about he's gonna be out till at least August and maybe even for the rest of the season. I saw a thing on this and the guy was saying like, why didn't they just say what the injury was? Why did yeah. they keep being like, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And then now it's really not fine. Right. And then the Dodgers announced that they will be covering that concrete with padding now. Uh, a little too late for Judge. Yeah. So, I mean, he can't even pinch hit. He can't do anything because, uh, you know, I'm sure you put pressure on that foot. Of course. So. Okay. So the next thing I have is... Over the past few years, we have a growing subsport within golf. And you know, golf is a gentleman's sport, right? Supposed to be. So the subsport is called Golf Rage. And, you know, there's a lot of etiquette to golf. Mm -hmm. People are just going crazy, hitting people, what? banging their golf carts into, uh, screaming at people. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you an example. Last month, a Florida dentist 
who advertises that he has a light touch. He was golfing with his young son. On the cart path was a doctor and his wife taking their daily walk. When the dentist started screaming at him that the path is only reserved for golf carts. Well, he proceeded to take his golf club out and beat the crap out of the doctor. I mean, the, the doctor was all bloody. His face was a mess. Holy and then, cow. And then this dentist proceeded to finish the golf game. <laughs> Holy crap. And then they showed the body cam footage of the officers when they arrested him. Yeah. And he was like, why are you arresting me? It was like, dude. Did you just have a psychotic break? <laughs> Seriously. You just so, assaulted somebody with your nine iron and you yeah. don't realize why you're being yeah. arrested? It's a thing anymore. People are just going crazy on the golf courses. Why? It's like, it's like, settle down. There is an etiquette. Just calm down. A lot of people live backed up to golf courses. Oh, so yeah. I could see why these people would be walking a path. Of course. You pay extra exactly exactly oh my God. i know last thing i have has to do with golf as well tgl they're calling it the tiger golf league is a new venture company an innovative golf league that's partnership with the pga tour it's fusing advanced tech with live action prime time what does that mean I know. I've yet to really understand exactly what they're going to do. However, this is what's happening. It's going to have 16th. Within the team is three PGA Tour golfers. Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy are the first two golfers to commit to do this. As a matter of fact, they've helped come up with the idea. There's going to be a built-in arena with a virtual golf course and a state-of-the-art game complex, they're calling it. Anyway, the players are going to be miked a live crowd it'll begin january of 2024 they figure the matches are going to be about two hours long and it's designed for prime time tv it's going to be on monday nights what are they going to do with football i have no idea that's the first thing i thought of i was like you picked monday night yeah monday wow. night's like huge for football it's, it's iconic for football right yeah so i don't know if it's going to be before maybe they'll start like early and oh. then it runs into football i don't know I, are they trying to attract the kids into golf because nobody I, gives a crap i'm guessing that's that's part of it sure so yeah. it's going to be 15 matches is the regular season there's going to be playoffs and there's going to be a championship and serena and venus williams are sponsoring the la team and some of the other investors are Steph Curry, Tony Romo, Justin Timberlake. There's a whole slew of people. Well, Steph Curry does uh, holy moly yes. golf, yeah. which I love. I know. I absolutely adore that. Yeah. Mostly because of Rob Riggle. <laughs> anyway, so I can see why Steph Curry would be involved. Oh, and yeah. I think Serena does a commercial, does a golf commercial with Brian Cox, doesn't she? Mm. It's for Michelob Ultra. Oh, cool. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, so, old school and new school. Yeah, kind of there you go. Yeah. And we all know that Tony Romo is a scratch golfer and Justin Timberlake. I mean, he's really good golfer. Yeah, yeah. Also. He's always doing those celebrity things. Exactly. Yeah, charity things and yeah. whatnot. So it kind of cool. makes sense. I mean, obviously, they're not giving out too much information right now, but they're just giving out enough to keep you intrigued until sure. January, you know? Sure. So we're looking forward to seeing something different, right? Yeah, I guess. So that's what we have in sports. Okay. The last episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. The finale, season five, episode nine, which was called Four Minutes. All right. Due to the flash forwards this season, we know that both Midge and Susie are very successful. So there's no surprises in this episode as far as that's concerned. No. But you and I have dreaded this moment. Dreaded it. Because it was inevitable. We knew what happened to Lenny Bruce in real yes. life. So the episode opens in 1965 with Lenny Bruce's infamous performance in San Francisco when he's mainly talking about his legal troubles. And he's just dying on stage. He's just oh, dying. Yeah. Terrible. I mean, in instead of laughs, he's getting groans and people are walking out. So heartbreaking. heartbreaking. Terrible. Obviously, he was on drugs at that yeah. point. And he was wearing pajamas under his coat. He was a wreck. He, he was, was a, wreck. a complete wreck. Yeah. yeah. 
And then Susie approaches him after and offers her help. I mean, I actually had to write this down because it really gets to you when he rejects her mm -hmm. and he says, keep those favors, use them for someone worthy. Yeah. And then he turns and says, is Mitch here? And she's yeah. like, no, because no. Mitch couldn't go. She was watching, but she couldn't no. see him again. No, I understand why not. I think it would have made him feel worse too. Mm. You know, actually seeing her and having this conversation because she's doing so well. Yeah, she is. Now, and, yeah. and he's he's yeah. terrible. But I will say, I am glad they put this in. Number one, it does show that they tried to help him, which mm. is important because yeah. I mean, it was inevitable so that they had to show something about Lenny Bruce's passing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it wasn't that ugly. I mean, it was right. ugly, but it wasn't, right. it wasn't horrible. And it wasn't as ugly as it could have been. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay. glad it was over pretty quick. Yeah. All right. So we're back to 1961. Mm -hmm. And in the previous episode, we know that Susie had approached Hetty to get Midge on the Gordon Ford show, which ended up with Susie sleeping on the park bench in Central Park. I guess she got trashed, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which led into an altercation with the two cops. And I can't. She kicked these cops' butt, <laughs> and then she's <laughs> running away with a nightstick and their hat. <laughs> so funny. Mitch has to bail her out of jail, yeah. and she takes her for a cup of coffee and um, and a piece of chocolate cake. Was that delicious? What? Oh my god! It looked good. I it know. looked really good. She then finds out how upset Susie was over needing to speak to Hetty for her. Yeah, and yeah. she had no idea. And, and, she feel, credit, and she feels bad. Yeah, yeah, she says, I would never have asked you if I knew. Yes, you know, exactly. So. But Susie agreed that it was the right move to make. Absolutely, yeah. You know? Because it was. It really was. It, it was. You know? Yeah, as hard as it was, it was. Mm -hmm. So Mitch gets to work and gets a call out to see Gordon in his office. And he's acting like a jerk. Yeah. And he says, uh, okay, you win. You're on the show. He tells her that it's for tonight. And he goes, problem? Yeah. Like, no, no. She took it in stride and handled it really well. Mm -hmm. And then ran out screaming to herself. It was mm -hmm. awesome. And then yeah. calling everybody she knew to come to the studio. And then and how about Rose? Oh, my God. How about Rose? What? I'm telling you. I'm not going. She didn't call me. Yeah child yes child yeah. nothing's wrong with the phone i've been home all day well <laughs> guess what the yeah. phone's off the hook for four hours rose so no you can't even work a freaking phone yeah, this is how exactly. useless you are but what's funny is once she hangs it up all the phone calls start oh coming my in. gosh because everybody's yeah. been trying to get a hold of her yeah. <laughs> even the writers yeah the writer. everybody zelda no don't surely we, we never had this conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah Joel. Yeah. Everybody's trying to call her. Yeah. How about Midge sitting in the bullpen in her underwear talking oh, to her father yeah. and yeah. all the writers are staring at her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so one of my favorite parts is Moist and Shirley. Falling. <laughs> so Joel and Archie go to the dress factory. Moist and Shirley are walking with canes. Yeah, of and... course they are. <laughs> <laughs> so Morse slips in the shower, calls out for Shirley, who's in bed naked. Yeah. The course. first thing she found was a fur coat. She puts on her fur coat, runs into the bathroom, and I'm down like a rock. And that rock fell right on top of me. It was like having a wet yak laying all over you. <laughs> so There's funny. nothing left to do but lay there and die. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> While they were laying there, they had a nice chat. She convinced him that it was time to retire and they're going to move to Boca. Yeah. Yeah. Which good for them. Yeah. So when we're in the green room, how do you like when Gordon comes in and just talks to Alan Shepard? He falls all over Alan Shepard, right? Because he was due on the show that night. Yeah. And then he goes Gives over. Gives him a huge welcome basket. Yeah. And uh, he goes over to Mitch and it's like... Why are you wearing something so fancy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, put you a know? sweater on over that. During the time when she was primping and getting ready, yeah, she had the fortune cookie fortune, and she tucked it in her dress. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Yeah. Because, you, you know, at the time, you were like, you're, okay. What, what, it, yeah. All it said was, your lucky numbers are. You yeah. Know? And I was like, oh, she's got lucky numbers. Okay. He lucky. acted like such an ass. What a jerk. 
he couldn't have been more horrible to her. Exactly. And then he tells her that she's only coming on as a writer. She's not coming on as a comic. Yeah. It's going to be an interest story. A human yeah, interest story. A right? human yeah. interest story. Right. And he makes her sit on a stool. She doesn't even get to sit on the couch. And the girl who did Carol Burnett, she did a good job. Yeah, she did. They, yeah, they did a little skit. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, then you see the two stools coming. Susie's pissed. Oh. Yeah. She's screaming, Mike, 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 Mike. I, I'll tell you something. I understand it, but I was like, oh my God, strangle her. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> and Mike was pissed too. He's like, yeah, what? he was. I what liked his he reaction. Doing? Absolutely. Yeah. He introduces her as our resident lady writer. So condescending. Meet Midge. And it, the interview was so lame. It was really all about himself. Oh, yeah. And he was doing everything he could to dig a knife into her, really. Oh, yeah. Here's yeah. our other writers. Yeah, exactly. Asking her stupid questions about right. what's the difference between a lady writer and a man writer. And it was just terrible. It was yeah. absolutely the most chauvinistic thing. And then when Midge turned it around and got laughs out of the audience, it pissed him off yes. that he cut to commercial to wrap it up. Where it wasn't supposed to be. And yeah. Mike freaked out. <laughs> He, he's like, I li and I like this. He says to her, stay on the stool. Yep. And he goes over to talk to Gordon. It's like, yeah. you know, we're still going to have four minutes. Yep. And who is like, well, I'll vamp. Yeah. It's like, it's like for four vamp. minutes? For four minutes, you can't vamp. But of course, Midge has a better idea. Well, here's the thing. Mike says to him, she's funny. You yeah. hired, hired her, her because she's funny. Yeah. Let her be funny. Yeah. He kind of put him in his place a little bit with that. He you did. Know? I, I appreciated that. Me too. Know? Me yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah, but Midge did. Yeah, she had a different idea. Definitely. And she looks over at the mic and gets Susie. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of doing something, something reckless that could go very badly for both of us. It could ruin us. And it could have. It could have. Yeah. yeah. And I like the fact that she talked to Susie about it first, basically got her okay. Well, she said, what do you think? Yeah. And then, of course, Susie, mm -hmm. you started your career by getting on a stage that no one told you to get on, saying a bunch of crap that no one wanted you to say. So. Yeah, basically, go for it. Go you for know, it. you've yeah. got my exactly. blessing. You're and sure? it's interesting because their, their customary, you know, break a leg is... Tits up. tits up yep and before she went on the show Susie tried to do it and Mitch yeah. was like no, no 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 not for this no not for the stool thing no. and now that they have agreed that she is gonna hijack this thing yeah and do her stand-up yeah they did the tits yep. up then Susie goes over to my car she says buckle up Mikey <laughs> yeah and he's like uh, uh okay uh, uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen here <laughs> yeah but then when they go over to the stools, she kind of apologizes to Gordon. She was like, it wasn't my intention to force your hand. Yeah. You know, and she had wanted him to want to put her on the show someday. Mm -hmm. So then he says, uh, you know the rule. And then I love this. I've just never been great at following rules. Yeah. And that gives him a little rut row too a little buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because she basically says, I'm not a writer. Yep. And I'm going to do what I came here to do. And he tries to stop her. Yes. And Mike is like, no, oh. let her go. Yep. And she grabs that mic and she goes over and she does her four minutes and she does them really well. It was great. It was great. She got a standing ovation. Everybody loved her. Yes. Even and he even, loved her. Even he loved her. Mm -hmm. Probably a minute and a half in. Mm, yeah. He started yeah. to see that the audience was totally with her. He they was were watching laughing. the audience. Exactly. Yeah. So he kind of had no other choice. Mm -hmm. So he surprisingly invited her over to the couch. Yeah. I was a little surprised at that too. I know. And it was a holy S word. Yes, it really was. <laughs> and then he finally gave her a proper introduction. And for the first time, you heard the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. And then he covers the mic and leans over to her and says, you're fired. Yep. Like, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the crowd's cheering. 
There and, they are. And yeah. it's really nice to see Abe. And yeah. he was really excited for her. He, he truly was. Yes. And it was really sweet. And yeah. even Rose was really excited yeah. for her. And yeah. and everybody was. Everybody that was important was in the audience. Right. And they were all cheering her on. And even Joel was like, you can say anything you want about me. Don't worry about it. You know? Right. And, and she uh, did. He, and she did. <laughs> uh, yeah. But she did it really, she did it well. It was classy. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it when he's like, I'd like to be able to live in New York tomorrow, but if I can't, so be it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was really good. It was really yeah. good. Yeah. But my favorite part of this whole episode was six, six months, months earlier. Yeah. Is Lenny and Midge sitting in a Chinese restaurant. Exactly. And he's teaching her how to be famous. Right. How to write her signature. It, had it, it has so to be it, illegible. Yeah, it's because she can't be like a regular person who went to right. school and is literate. <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps doing it, keeps rejecting it. And then she does it and he's like, oh, this is Sanskrit. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and then comes the mysterious fortune cookie that yeah. he grabs out of her hand. Yeah. And he reads her. G- he gently grabbed. He didn't like snatch yeah. it or anything. No, 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 no. He's just like, no. allow me. And he yeah. took it from her. Exactly. A spotlight awaits you center stage yeah. all you have to do is step up and claim it once you do everyone will know who you are they will know your wit your intellect your smile yeah and she's like wow that must be really small writing <laughs> <laughs> and of course and it's a little on. note with the lucky numbers on it yeah yeah, yeah. So he's cool. really sweet he oh, really God. is and that's the way i want to remember me too things. and it was really nice that they put that in there at the yeah. end yeah and i would have been okay if they ended it right there me too. But I also like what's coming. It flashes forward again to 2005. Five. Midge is in her 70s. She's in her office and she's dressing down her team of publicists, <laughs> I guess, yeah. and managers yeah. Yeah. who have left a date open. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> so then afterwards, she's alone. Yeah, in a huge apartment in, a in, huge in the Dakota penthouse. building in New York. Yep. And she's walking basically through all these empty rooms that are set up for like these huge yeah. parties and yeah. stuff. But Which was pretty sad. It's pretty sad. She's all yeah. by herself. She right. ate in the kitchen with her staff around her completely ignoring her and she's completely ignoring them. So she's yeah. just eating alone. Then yeah. she walks through this entire house to get this, to this like little room, which is almost like a maid's quarters. Mm-hmm. And it's cozy. And she sits there and she calls Susie, who was in some tropical location. Hawaii. So it was funny because they watched Jeopardy over the phone every day. And they just had a great time. And they were yelling at each other and cracking up and doing the whole thing. And that was a really nice way to end the series with them laughing, as a matter of fact. Exactly. So there you have it. Well, at least they ended it well. I'll Mm -hmm. say that. I got to agree, too. I like this episode. I would have changed a couple of things, but still, I liked it a lot. Yeah, there was a hell of a lot of build up to it, so I'm glad it, it did sure. pay off in the end. Yeah. Bye bye, Measle. Time for the deep questions. Here we go. Number one Do you put ice in your drinks? No, I am usually a room temperature kind of person. Me too. There are only a couple of things that I put ice in. Like a margarita. Like a margarita. That's exactly (laughs) what I was thinking. Like a margarita. Of course. (laughs) Then again, on the other hand, I have a tooth issue. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, too much sensitivity. Yeah. 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 I have that too. I I don't. Oh, okay. Unless I get it out somewhere, I almost never put ice in anything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Number two. Okay. When slash where do you have your best ideas? <laughs> do you really want to hear this answer? It's always been on the toilet. How about that? Even when I worked, if I had to think about something, mm-hmm. I would take a couple seconds, go to the ladies' room for a minute. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Gather myself and come up with something. It's always mm-hmm. on the toilet. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. Have That's okay. <laughs> um, I think... It usually happens when I'm alone. On the toilet. Not really on the toilet, no. Um, But it's not in the shower either. And I know a lot of people say it's the shower. Mm -hmm. But in the shower, I'm I'm not coming up with ideas. I'm running over stuff. But I think it's just when I I take some time and like I close the door and I'm all by myself. 
even when they, even going outside, it used to be smoke break, but I don't mm-hmm. smoke anymore, you right. know? So I would do that and I'd just go and change my location, be by myself and think about it. Hmm. I have two other places too. Another one is when I'm laying in bed trying to fall asleep. That's why mm-hmm. I always keep a piece of paper and a pen next to my bed. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is when I'm driving sometimes, when, yeah. I have a long, when I have a long drive. Yes. And of course, I always have paper and pen in the, um, in the vehicle. So. Me too. I always carry um, in the car too. That's a really good one. Mm-hmm. You know, just driving and thinking yeah. about things and, yeah. and mulling it over. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Good answers. <laughs> Okay, number three, what's more important, integrity or intelligence? Integrity. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I agree. You gotta be able to live with yourself. Yeah, of course. You know? (laughs) Yeah. You can always learn something new, but, you know, integrity you gotta have. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Because if you have no integrity and you're just working with intelligence, then you can talk yourself into doing anything and justify just about anything. Yeah. Yeah. And usually is. Yeah, and it usually yeah. is. There you go. All right. Number four. Okay. Do you consider yourself introspective? Oh, I don't know. You should see the face that's being made at me right now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. <laughs> that would be a no. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess I would have to say no. Yeah. How about you? Yes. yes. You do? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, number five. Okay. I'm so interested in this question. Okay. Would you ever consider an indecent proposal? That's what it is. Well, I mean, I would I you know what? No. No. If it's indecent, no. 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 Cuz I'm all about integrity. That's it. <laughs> I have no price. <laughs> That's right. How about you? Oh yeah, you. I can I be would bought. Consider it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not married anymore. You know yeah. what I mean. So, yeah. if I was married, no. It doesn't have to be that kind of indecent. It can be any indecent. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically an indecent proposal. Is basically that. Oh. Yeah. But a decent proposal can. Oh. Okay. No. <laughs> There was a movie, Indecent Proposal, and well, that's what that was all about. Oh, if that's specifically what you were referring to, the answer is absolutely positively no. <laughs> you know, but an indecent what if, proposal. What if Robert Redford was on the in- other end of that indecent no. proposal? <laughs> no, but um, I was thinking beyond that as far as an indecent proposal, you know. I don't like know, what? You, like stealing I know, you nuclear codes? Me... I mean, uh, I what, what was that? To stealing what? the nuclear codes? <laughs> I mean, that is an indecent proposal too. When you think about it, sure, it doesn't. Well, have I would, to, It doesn't I, have to be regarding, uh, you know, sex or anything. Well, no, but I didn't even say you had to do it. I said consider. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't even consider it. No, I would consider it. I want to hear what my options are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, those were my deep questions for Letter I. <laughs> I'm still giggling from deep questions. <laughs> okay, we're up to table topics, right? Okay, I got the red box. All right. It sounds like it's getting emptier. Well, there's still quite a few. Okay, so go. Let's see what happens here. All right. Oh, this is an interesting question. Okay. What cars has your family owned? Pontiac. Yeah, a lot of Pontiacs. A lot of Pontiacs, yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a Chieftain. My brother had a GTO. GTO, that was an awesome car. My other brother had a GTO. I had a Firebird. Mm -hmm. I had a Trans Am. Mm -hmm. So that does ring bell. Mm -hmm. And Caddies. My grandfather and, and then caddies. caddies. Yeah, exactly. Caddies was a big those. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's funny when I watch the um, auctions, mm-hmm. and I see these caddies, a real nice Eldorado or something yeah. that, that goes for like eight grand. I'm like, oh man, if he was still alive, oh man, I would buy that for him. I you know? know. Yeah, he loved so, those. He oh, loved God. them. The big loved. old metal boats. Oh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, my uncle, your brother. 
has lots of vehicles. Oh, yeah. 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 My family, when I was young, had two Novas, mm -hmm. BMW. Okay. And then my dad worked for Ford. He was a That's uh, right. car yeah. salesman. So, so they had a lot of different Fords. Right. He would recycle it because he, he got to drive his and then my mom got hers and mm -hmm. stuff. But I had a Trans Am. I loved my Trans Am. I loved my Trans Am. I wish I yeah. still had my Trans Am. I wish they still made them. I know. Yeah, I can't and, believe and that made Pontiac them will like belly they, up. Yeah. I made them like they did, not like yeah, tried like to make a, retro. a newfangled like version. A, like a um, charger. Like, yeah. You know, the retro ones. Yeah. Yeah. If I worked at GM, that's what I would press. Pitch. I would pitch it all the time. Oh, yeah. I would, too. Absolutely. Let's bring back Pontiac. You know? Yeah. I know. I know. All right. That was a good one. Would you rather visit a big city or the countryside? Yeah. Big city. There's more to do. Absolutely. You know? Well, in some cases, I guess, countryside. Because if you're going to, nice. like, Ireland and Scotland and stuff, there's a mm -hmm. lot of countryside. and Yeah. But you still Everything. want to go to Dublin. Absolutely. You know? And Glasgow. Yeah. I don't want yeah, to just, exactly. you know, in Edinburgh. I don't want exactly. to just be sitting out, you know, with the cows. Mm hmm Moo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, one more? Yeah. Who taught you how to ride a bike? My dad. How about you? I don't remember. Was it me? <laughs> I think my grandfather. Well, I... I got my first bike, my tricycle, at my grandparents' mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And there was a ton of people there when that happened. Uh, and I'm going to, and I even remember this. It was not only my dad, it was my brother, your uncle. Yeah, it was my dad and my brother who helped I me. Don't, I don't remember who taught me how to ride a bike. It was probably yeah. a joint effort. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah. I taught you how to fall off one. Yeah, I fell off one really good. Really good. You and me both. <laughs> Yeah, I still got the scar from that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ooh. That, that you, was a hard you got You got the brunt of it. And I, I tried saving you too. <laughs> oh, man, that hurt. Uh, yeah. Okay, should we do one more? Because that was a okay. short one. Okay. If you could have any view from your back porch, what would it be? The ocean. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. That's mine too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the ocean. But I would need a lot of space in between. Y you have to. Yeah. You know, because you don't want a um, a sandy happening. No, <laughs> you know? definitely not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I can picture it. Oh, for sure. Nice porch, nice long backyard. Absolutely. And then the ocean. Mm -mm. Oh, forget it. It's the best. Yeah, that would be the best for sure. All right, those were our table topics. Not too bad. No. We're chipping away at that red box, boy. Mm hmm So before we go, they just announced the 46th class of the Kennedy Center honorees. My favorite comedian, Billy Crystal. Oh. Yeah. And the other ones are Dionne Warwick, Barry Gibb, Queen Latifah and Renee Fleming, who's an opera star. I had to look her up. I didn't know who she was. It's going to be hosted by Gloria Stefan on December 3rd. How about that? Yeah. All right. So, well, have yourself a good 4th of July. Absolutely. Happy Independence Day, everyone. Okay. Yes. Happy Independence Day. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to tell your friends and follow us on Facebook at Sense and Nonsense A to Z, all one word. And wherever you're listening, please like our episodes. And if you're listening on YouTube, Subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit the notification bell. Is it the Liberty Bell? Ding? I don't think the Liberty Bell does ding anymore since it's got a crack in it. Okay. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> to get notified of each episode as it becomes available. We appreciate you listening. With that, we're out of here. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>